this video, I'm going to explain just what I see. Today what is think June 30th, 2021, 5.54 p.m. What I see from the outside looking in as a story that I've watched develop and unfold. Global Witness Channel started December 31st, 2027, uh, 2017. Almost has 6,666,666 6, views, 462 views, almost. And, and uh, today, today is June 30th, 2021 exactly 42 months ago it's June 30th what's the big deal it's 42 months there so is what? it one Henry you well, think you know more I, than when I when I, I see the stories unfold and the the themes of how things are are ran how they're where they're heading what happens when you continually show what's really happening and how scenarios take place that you're supposed to um, you're supposed to understand and be scared how things are ran whether you like it or not and then you have to understand that God is in complete control not a man no man is in control only God the spirit that is coming at everybody like a flood and you can't you can't stop it you can only try to slow it down or try to instill like a fearful tactic in God's people in order to you know basically just shut up so one way or another eventually the truth is supposed to get stomped to the ground and it's supposed to practice and prosper so today is the 42nd month since Derek Bro started. And when it was uh, 1260 days, I took a look at that too. 1260 days. So I look for these days. Is there anything significant that happens where, let's just say the day started. We're going into the new year. It's a new year. Things are going to be different. And you get to 1260 days. Yeah, that's when they can the flex channel. And then on June Henry. 14th, basically in the morning, I looked up. I was getting ready to watch one of uh, one of Jonathan Clegg's videos, and then his entire channel went down on June 14th. And that even reminded me of one of the videos that he had that had a, a exit route or exit plan or something and you, you showed that sign exit June 6 14 or uh, 6 14 exit Same thing so that was the exit for Jonathan Cleck's main channel June 14th but why am I going by <clears throat> Derek Bros's time that his channel this channel here started it's not like Derek started on this channel on the internet and he has that brightly divided and he put a video up. The first video ever was uh, June 30th, uh, 2010 or 11. Let me check. Why don't you look it up? Yeah. Brightly divided. This channel was earlier, but what I'm saying is the first video that Derek made was him back in back on June 30th. Use programs like Kazaa to download music, and the recording industry claims this cost them millions in lost revenue. So, as today is June 30th, 2021, exactly 11 years ago. So, you have 11, 11. You have 11 years of this, and then 11 years of that. But you also have 11, 11 as the, the peace treaty, which is the, the peace deal, 
that usually takes place just like World War I ended, started on June 28, 1914 because I, th I think his name had something Duke in it and his wife were assassinated. And then almost five years later on 11-11, 2018 was the, the peace like signed deal and then the war officially ended on June 28, 1919. Loma well, and that uh, downloading certainly. is a copyright violation. Well, certainly, uh, cop uh, copyright infringement uh, is rampant. And uh, it's always uh, been our computer goal to commercialize this network because it tends to freeze up. So 11 years ago today, and ironically enough, Joining December 31st, 2017, adding the 42 months from what I from what I see from the exact day. So what what's going to happen around June 30th, 2021? What's going to happen a couple days beforehand, June 28th, June 29th, June 30th? What happened on June 14th? Uh, significant in in this in this thing that that I'm I'm witnessing and then I'm just writing it down as a witness from the outside with no ties from the inside uh, and that's why I've lasted this long because when you're, well, not, you're not from the inside you just you'll just get harassed and people will attack you they'll attack your your family no Henry, they'll they'll do whatever it is they can do to try to get you to stop doing what you're doing I understand there's consequences behind it, but I also know for a fact that God is in charge. And everybody that thinks that it, it's a single individual, you're being led astray because God is a spirit that communicates with his people. And they collaborate together with that spirit that you just call the Heavenly Father God. The problem is, there's a vision that's and being played really out, and I'm watching it unfold on the YouTube platform, the and I'm world. telling you what I'm seeing, knowing what all the consequences are and all the threats. I've already went over all the threats, and it's all about the tree of life. God wasn't talking about, thou shalt not literally touch it, because it's you, it's your body, it's your life, and the God that told you not to touch it is the one that, when you do, and it's just you doing your thing, taking care of your business, whether you're a man or a woman, you are doing a natural thing, but the spirit of Satan that runs through your head that you were told not to do, and you know that you're being surveilled, so you were taught a doctrine that was putting you in fear so the idea was to conceal it that way thou shall not touch it lest you die because if you touch you're gonna die so the threat is and the and the whole entire purpose of this is to lie to you and get you to actually touch it where God was ta telling you not to. The way to actually not do it. Wait, hold on, Henry. One more point is the, the, the ones that tell you not, thou shalt not touch it. And then they show you as like a man that they don't even have anything anymore. It's a wall. It's like locked up. They went inverted, turned the key up, sealed tight, locked it, and so you don't even know what's going on inside of the body, which is the, which is the AI mixture, because that's why there's a plug here. So even the ones that are telling you not to touch it have hidden, there's a hidden secret inside of their body here. It's hidden inside of their body. So what's being done inside of their own body and then those that say do not touch it, but yet they're touching it. It's just that there's a whole hypocrisy that goes on. 
to try to keep people living in fear. And Henry will explain to you, if he can talk faster, that the the way that the the way that they got you to believe in what's wrong is how the internet itself is a it's a it's a source of knowledge and information and if you can use it for good then the internet for you is good now if you're using it for bad and you have certain evil tasks to do and or you're just you know you're filled with lust and desire and you're struggling with the porn addiction and and that type of thing you you well then yeah that's the sin of it and and then just like what you're doing with yourself is either a sin or not when when you have perverseness inside of you and you have lust that you can't control well then yeah you're going to use the internet for sin yeah you're going to use your your body for sin and but you can also use your body and to not sin because you live in your flesh until the day that your spirit separates from your flesh and you're going to have somebody else tell you what you can and cannot do with your own body proceed henry which was out of a fearful state of mind you are doing something that you normally see I don't always agree with Henry but I mean you are sitting behind a 33rd street you know that right freaking Mason he's such a liar acting like he isn't part of the inside would not do when people want to alter their body or tattoo their body or pierce their body I mean, that's on you doing what you're going to do with free will, with your body, and nobody can tell you anything otherwise because it's something that's available that can be done. So this all-seeing eye right here, the Binswanger, at the Binswanger Triangle, it's kind with of Big Ben. Name. Apparently, this is the this is the secret. And if anybody from the inside actually spoke about it, they would have their tongue. Well, you wouldn't out. even hear them speaking about it because they wouldn't be around. They wouldn't allow that to continue. So they'll just allow me to keep talking, and then I'll have the the fear and threats of what comes from speaking about thou shalt not touch the knowledge of the tree of good and evil. Because one situation says this is good. The other one says, no, 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 no. You need to get turned up and converted both up and lock and seal tight. And and, uh, and then that's why Kurt Cobain sang that song. But the ones that say, no, no, that's one? evil. Because that's, because what it is, is it's, it's on a timer and it's uncontrollable. But hey, Lucifer loves you. Now what Trump was said, he said that. Uh, the snake was talking to that silly woman, meaning Eve. I am. So basically, here, let me take some credit for this one. Donald Trump's speech, when he was talking about the, the state snake, he was talking about this, and he was talking about how the serpent, how he begeeved, uh, begeeved, begeeved Isle, he, he begeeved Isle, and and then Adam wasn't deceived. He just volunteered to proceed with, uh, you know, relations with Eve, and but the serpent, before she took him in, like before she took him in, she knew he was a snake. So basically, the snake is like. I'll try to blame it on me, Eve. You're the one that fell for the trick. It's your fault. It was just an idea. It ain't like I did it. It's just an idea. You fell for it. And then you lured Adam into it because he was like, uh, because he decided to do it. He went in with it. And 
and that was the whole reason why Trump was explaining that snake. I didn't realize that when he said that like five or six months ago, but I realized it when he said it this time. It's all about taking in the snake, and uh, the writing is on the wall. The writing is on the wall. This way here is said to be uh, good, and the other way is said to be good. So good and evil. Don't touch the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's what you do when you're touching it is what is, what is the problem. Porn and that combined equals sin. Yourself, your body, and there's nothing but you? Who told you that was a sin? Exactly, that's who told you it was a sin. What I'm telling you is, you live, I battle the same thing, like, and then I realize, well, all you gotta do, Rob, is just stop watching porn and stop being a pervert. That's all. That's it. That's it. That, that is it. But Satan wants you, the snake here, wants you, you to feel, feel, feel guilty that you need to, uh, because in the beginning, because even when Satan tries to get you to believe, like in the Old Testament, that it's better for you to spill your seed inside of your brother, your dead brother's wife, instead of spilling it on the ground. So, I mean, that's why Satan has run the, the entire planet since it, since from the beginning. It's it's just it's never been anything other than that, except for coming up very shortly because we're here. God, the devil, created man and woman in his own image. He created him. He, him, and them. So he did that. And and then this... Again, because when you have twins, twins would be the way that you could really trick a bunch of people because you could have a twin that did this host body system because you, you see it. You've seen it from her. Uh, however, the male was acting like he was her and that he did that thing, but he didn't. Uh, or it was just that the fact that she was just a, a female from the gate and he was a man. So you look at it like, oh, wow, you did that? So it's in there, it's concealed? Yep. And then uh, in the meanwhile, like, it, it could have just been a regular male and a regular female. Or at the same time, the Eve could and did fall because she was beguiled by the serpent, the idea, in order to do that, to become a man, I mean a, a woman, from a man, to have that, the snake-serpent combination with you. System is, a, is an electric, it's plugged in, it's like a plug. It just has like, a, like an electric it's type like a of a spark socket right there look to it because it has electricity flowing through basically it's like electricity zap electricity and this is an AI mixture and site drop snake implants the one wolf, the lone wolf. Microphone upside down, cross, eye patch, electric socket, plug in, AI. Also in the Bible, in Matthew, I'm not sure exactly where it is, but you remember, it says if your right eye offends you, pluck it out. That's when you take it literally. What are you gonna do? You're gonna pluck your right eye out. You're gonna you're gonna put it into the idea of the serpent being the kingdom of God is within you. So then you'll be able to see the fish swimming in the sea year after year with those two lost souls. Right, next year, Eve online snakes in a vigil.
this first beginning part here. Hi everyone, the lone wolf here. Welcome to some evil line exploration. Snakes in it. I did, it just I mean, looks like the whole yeah, vigil, there. vaginal, and then this the snake's coming out. And you see that the uh, roll out like an extension the... coming out of the hole, lined up like it's rolling out. And um, I'm doing a Serpentis vigil right here. Potentially, you've got some pretty good loot in this. So uh, let's start. Which is um, in the Serpentis vigil, I do like to move away. So it's like an it's like an extension it keeps extending out the snakes in a vigil, like a giant vigil vigil. Uh, from the gate just a little bit because you're warping exactly at zero but uh, the enemy uh, rats are actually pretty far out and this looks like a snake he said enemy rats i may be an enemy but i'm not a rat because a rat is somebody who is from the inside speaking about it however the rats are the ones that get the information out that way Satan can be cast down but how do you rat without being a rat guess you have to talk in another language or something like eating a spray like 50 60 rock. kilometers so I do like to just take a little distance uh, which which won't really uh, make any difference for me to actually use the gate when it's when it's all done but and I typed in a typed in then there was like a see that snake implant and I didn't even know that this was a thing online I stumbled across it so this is Eve online implant sets and it's just about it's like a computerized Computer program, it, right. I I'm guess. Major freak. And uh, welcome to dyslexia. I swear I've either got dyslexia or this game induced in dyslexia with me. So I'll get to that in a bit. First off, I have implants. May 23rd, 2020, I remember Nick Vandalay did. A video where he was in a hospital with his right hand or was it left hand whichever hand it is that you're supposed to cut your middle finger and eat the pain right around that time he was in the hospital okay finally yeah um getting the worst of the uh, the most frustrating uh things out of the way like system index from most frustrating things out of the way? Yep, things. Manufacturing and implants, and it's very frustrating. Uh, in order to get a proper price index, you've got to take into account so many things. Take in. And it's so expensive. Um, so. Not when it's all for, I've for free. Got most of what I need. I think I'll make the video. It's not perfect, but it'll do. Um, here's what I did. I got all my guys, and I found out who had the, the best implants that I could get. I got all these guys. Um, yeah. It, just You just hear it. You hear it in their voices with what they're actually talking about. Yes. What would be Eve implants? A one could be boobs, boobs implant, and then implant this inside, and then that you go from male to female, and that's the that's the system, male female system. And this is what I see for the past four years, and I just happened to come across people that. I don't know, it kind of showed me that they, they kind of understand what's going on in this planet and what's taking place and what will take place. So I pay attention to those people and then I start to realize that other people are paying attention to my channel as well that 
they know those people and then those people know other people and then it's it's like and then you start realizing that well I me personally start waking up oh that even that even reflects in my own family and my workplace yep. and you ever watch the Truman Show Henry? together and then I start thinking back more wow when did all this take place when when like how Around long has, has this been going on 2001 so I'm at the point now where all right all right it's I, I can I can see I, um, I'm awakening to a lot of truths and realities uh, pretty harsh truths that Actually. the spirit of Satan has a short time and the spirit of Satan knows it and that's why he's working tough through people and it, and what will happen is they'll try to get even closer and closer and closer to you and try to work on your emotions with people that are close to you that can really be eye-opening so here's what I see after 42 months is Jesus the Messiah then said some of them of Jerusalem is it not he whom they seek to kill but lo he speaks boldly and they say nothing unto him do hey, the rulers know indeed that this is before. the very Christ how about boldly. we know this man whence he is but when Christ comes like I, they're like, I, I mean, I don't really know about who he is. But when Christ does come, no man knoweth when he is. Then cried Jesus in the temple, as he taught, saying, "Ye both know me, and you know where I am, and I am not come of myself." Even though he truly did, because there was no, there was no human being with him that he was preaching with, uh, with his doctrine. But he that sent me is true, whom ye know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he has sent me. Then they sought to take him, but no man laid hands on him. So no man, no man laid hands on him, because his hour has not yet come. And many of the people believed on him and said, When Christ comes, will he do more miracles than which this man has done? So the Pharisees heard that the people murmured such things concerning him, and the Pharisees and the chief priests sent officers to take him. And they said, and Jesus said to them, Yet a little while I'm a little while I am with you, and then I go unto him that sent me. You shall seek me, and shall find me not. And where I am, you cannot come. Then said the Jews among themselves, Where will he go, that he should not? We should not find him. Will he go into the disperse among the Gentiles and teach the Gentiles? What manner of saying is this that he said, You shall not seek. You shall seek me, and you shall not find me. And where I am, you cannot come. Living water. So Jesus is coming. June 28, 2021. How do I know? How could not know? I was just about to send Robin and John from Denver the, the same text to both of them. I decided, you know what, no, I was going to put this on a video. What do you mean? You're two witnesses? Man, I just seen Clegg's <laughs> last title and the saying just kind of gave me chills. Like, I'd just seen it. Jesus is coming. June 30th, 2021. What's up, family? I got I to gotta make this quick, and I apologize for that, and I will make more videos in the future going. Now you got a sheep dying so, and a serpent growing. Isn't I'm that weird that the to guy talking you. to you, I've actually had pic people say, hey, Johnny, I drew a picture of you, and on the picture they drew of me, they drew the same thing as a hieroglyph from Akhenaten and Nefertiti. I wonder what the odds are. <laughs> and I'll show all, I'm going to show all that to you. So anyway, so yeah, there you go. So yeah, there you go. So there's Robin with his head chopped off. Because Robin's the one that sent him that picture 
of the art museum with the serpent coming up from the sea and eating Johnny. Eating Johnny. It was linketh with his eyeball. He's got his headphones on. See that? So the serpent. There's a garden back there. As a Azalee. That's the garden. It looks like the crown of thorns on top of the. I did a video of it before. So as uh, Henry over there was saying earlier, how he's going to show you what he sees. I'm going to continue to show you what I see, and I'm going to show you three different people that I get really good knowledge from. So why wouldn't I pay attention to, to all of them? So I get information. I mean, it's just it's just how I interpret it. It could be completely wrong. It could just be an entire stumbling stone that's put in front of me. Uh, because this Amazon amazing discovery of the coming Antichrist the doctrine of Balak, the stumbling stone and more. So the doctrine of Balak is the stumbling stone that's put before the people. And, uh, and then, so Jesus is coming June 28th, 2021. What had me on? Uh, I've seen miracles that are beyond any miracles I've experienced. I've laid hands on people that are blind. See, you know, Johnny's actually telling you the truth. It is as ridiculous as it sounds. Put it, put no, no offense, Johnny, but you know how it sounds, and you know the perception of people. Like, you can lay hands on somebody that's blind in one eye. Well, yeah, you can, because when they're blind in one eye, it just means their spiritual eye they can't see until you show them something that's like, huh? And then it opens up their eyes, and then they start to see. So you have the ability to lay hands on people. Okay, like completely blind in one eye, and they can. But what are you showing them? Is the question that people want to know. Like, how is it you're, how are, you're laying hands on? Them, that's all. No, no, no. He's showing you video clips. That's what laying hands on people means. Healing their third eye that's blind. So, I've laid hands on people that have incurable diseases, and their diseases are gone. So, I mean, I've had some incurable diseases, but I decided to hang out with Batman, and me and him were able to uh, save the world or something. Um, incurable. You heard what he said? Incurable. There's people that are behind the scenes that are, that are like, no. Johnny's not, he didn't know. Him. He's just playing games with Robin. <laughs> I mean, I hope he's playing games with him. I, I, I've seen and experienced miracles that most people can't even imagine happening. They can't even think it. What's happened on this trip to convince me, to assure me, to guarantee me that the Lord's communicated that the King of Kings is coming? Remember Paul took a trip, a three-week trip to King... Uh, that to the king to convince the king about what he saw that today is the 30th and well Jonathan's channel got canned 16 days ago I'm just saying has all been documented 14th 16 17 20 20 days is 4th of July 5th 4th July, three weeks, 21 days. It's it's so crazy. It, I'll look, it's so crazy you almost couldn't believe it. But I documented it. So, I'm just going to go. <laughs> You're going to start like uh, So here we go. It's not even believable. The king's coming. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. The king of kings is coming. The king is coming. The king is coming. Jesus is coming. So anyway, I'll show you how he communicated that to me in my next video. 
So when I heard Justin earlier talking about Jesus coming, I had to record the videos because I know how, you know, you have them up and you take them down and it was too good for me to let it go from when I heard the first time as I connect the dots. So I'm going to play what Justin was saying earlier today. I was just about to send Robin and John from Denver the, the same text to both of them. But I decided, you know what, no, I was going to put this on a video. Man, I just seen Clex's last title of the saying just kind of gave me chills. Like, I'd just seen it. Jesus is coming. What's up, family? I got I to gotta make this quick, and I apologize for that. And I will make more videos in the future going deeper into this. But the, the details that will be left out in this video are truly not important. Um, the only thing is important is right after I uploaded the video, I'll be back shortly, um, a few hours after that, maybe more than a few, but uh, that evening, a couple of days ago, I, I was taken into police custody. I was put into jail. And uh, when I was taken into jail, I had not committed a crime. Um, and that's the truth. I had not been charged with a crime. And that's the truth. Um, when, I, when I ended up getting to my jail cell, after booking and everything, the, the cell that I got put in, I never came out until I got released this morning. And the way he communicated it to me. And by the way, he made sure Remember that 320 thing I showed you guys? Remember the last video on my channel on YouTube? Where I said, it's, guys, it's late, I gotta go to bed, and I, I showed you my phone, it was 320. Uh, when I walked the into said, my cell, right then, meant, there was, there was the a end. thin window. Uh, By a bizarre set of circumstances, of I ended outside, up in this room and right I was looking here. outside of, a, of a, a giant sign that said, Jesus saves, and, um, right outside the window and it kind of made me mad when I first seen it and the first thing I said I, I read it out loud it said Jesus saves Jesus saves who and uh, I sat down you know kind of self-pity sulking about my situation <laughs> and uh, I look over on the wall uh, <laughs> and a, a past inmate had written hey, where'd your teeth go Ron? oh they're gonna uh, get knocked out trust the you. dead men Hey, is oh, death perfect. to their sins hey. and death to those things that cause their troubles. Um, you know, past inmate had wrote that. And it started really making me think because situations that I end up in like this one could be avoided. It was future mistake. I mean, past mistakes. So, I remember... Um, when I got out of jail and I did uh, the burglaries and all different counties and and then there was something in Jersey that was part of it and I I just I I just admitted to everything and I did my time and then all of a sudden when I was in there the the warrant disappeared and then they let me out of jail and then I got out before and then I got pulled over and they said there was a warrant. I'm like, okay, uh, I did my time. I was there doing it and it popped up and then it disappeared again. Uh, so I can relate to what Justin's saying that you could, you know, happen to just, if, like if you don't stop uh, with what you're doing, it, we can kind of make things appear or disappear. You know, one thing or can lead to another and they can release uh, the, uh, you can get released from from jail or you don't get released from jail that led me up to being put in a jail cell without committing a crime so I read that I kind of stewed on it ain't much else to do um, I sat in this cell for like I don't know, 24 hours, 30 hours, a little over a day. 
And last night, you know, I was really freaking out in that cell. I had no idea when I would be released. Uh, 24 hours, 30 hours, a little over a day. And last night, you know, I was really freaking out in that cell. I had no idea when I would be released. Uh, the things that the, the officer told me was is that a warrant popped up for officer. charges that I had been sentenced on almost 10 years ago. Yep, yep, yep. I, I hear you. served my sentence for both of the charges. Yep, you heard that story. And served probation and completed everything. So I was really freaking out because these weren't just little charges. And I felt like something happened in the system and or somebody was manipulating the system mm -hmm. in order to put me into custody for a long time for something that I had already I had already paid my debt to society for it. Um, so last night I was reading some things on the walls that people had written and it was weird because they were oh uh, yeah the writing is on the wall the writing is on the wall it's been interpreted the the kingdom is numbered and and the kingdom is numbered so it's meany meany tekel apar sin is how I see it. They're all written in pencil and very thinly, so you don't see it until you really start looking into like the grooves of the wall and stuff. And then I started seeing these, these things in there, and I'm not going to go into each one, but they led me back to looking out that window, and I was thinking about like my family and my kids and being away from everybody, and I knew that it could be for a long time if this, this went wrong, and and they didn't sort it out. If it wouldn't be sorted out, then I, I was gonna be in there for a while. Uh, I truly believe that this is what happened. Last night, there was no, I didn't sleep the night before. I did fall asleep, I shouldn't say that, but every time that I fell asleep, I woke back up in like a panic attack. Not a literal panic attack, but a very anxious feeling. Um, last night I felt really like buggy in my head I was really paranoid and uh, I just looked out that sign again and it said Jesus saves and uh, I, I, I did I, I just I, I prayed honestly I was like Jesus if this is the name I'm supposed to be using because I've always kind of believed that they're that there was some funny business with the name. I always thought that there was like something going on in order for it to be like some kind of trick so we would never know who that man's real name was. And that's why there's all the Yahusha, Yaho, Yeshua, Yeshua, all those things. Now I know, or I know, everybody's gonna have to know themselves. Uh, hopefully you don't have to know the same way that I know. Um, I, I just talked to Jesus honestly. I was like, Jesus, I'm not supposed to be here. I, I need you to help me. I'm not going to lie and act like I'm praying for something that I'm not praying for. Jesus, I need you to get me out of this cell. I need you to get me out of here and take me back to my children. I don't remember anything after praying. I fell asleep. I guess directly after. I don't remember ever tossing and turning. I don't remember ever waking up. This morning I woke up feeling nothing but dread. It was not dead. It was not daylight yet. I looked out that window and I thanked Jesus for putting me to sleep. And I was actually grateful for that. And I was like, you know what? All I remember was praying to Jesus and I actually slept soundly. Awesome. And then I thought to myself, I feel like I can go back to sleep and I just thanked Jesus for that and I drifted back off to sleep next thing I knew I was getting woke up before 8 a.m. being told to, to pack up I was out um, it was over so that might not be some crazy testimony to you guys but the way that these events have taken place I need to get myself in line with Jesus. Um, and I, I need to tell on myself too and repent right now. I, I was thinking in my head and stuff like I, I made one of those half-assed deals that I wouldn't smoke cigarettes anymore. Um, and I smoked a yeah, cigarette when I got out. That was like when I said I, I wouldn't like take Xanax anymore either. Jesus. 
And um, but you or you? I know that he's a little bit more enlightened than my my consciousness. So it's not that he is uh, like just ooh, stewing and wanting to just pound my head in for lighting a cigarette. But it ain't right. It's only hurting me. I, I have to figure out how to get my mind under control. Uh, sometimes just the just the battle between little things like cigarettes. When I let it go on too long, it, it affects it affects me to where I make other bad decisions. So I've made the decision not to do these battles. That it was like the lesser of the lesser of evils, and that's just not the case. It's time for me to clean my temple, and I know that. So. If you ever ask me, so this is June thirtieth. His name is Jesus. So it's an interesting story that you're telling, and and it happened on today, which is the forty-second month since Derek Rose started his YouTube channel. What's up, family? Um, sorry for the weird view. And this was on my birthday. But, uh, I wanted to give a little update. I'm uh, not going to be ago. uploading for a time period. Uh, at least nothing over a minute long. Just because I'm somewhere that I don't really have service. So, yep. That's that. <sighs> And then, over here, I can help interpret what's being done. No wonder, Matthew chapter 27, we read, and they had then a notable prisoner called Barabbas. What was it, some guy, uh, one famous biblical teacher says, Barabbas, what means son of the father? When they were crying out for Barabbas, they were asking for the son of the father. Yeah, but what father? Jesus said, you are your Satan. father, the devil. Yeah, that's the son of the father they were asking for, the devil's father, the devil's son. Therefore, when they were gathered together, Pilate said to them, whom will you that I release unto you, Barabbas or Jesus, is, which is called Christ? For we, we knew that for him they had delivered him. When he was set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. I bet. But the chief set down on the judgment seat, his wife sent unto him, saying, Have nothing to do with that just man, for I have suffered many things this day in a dream because of him. But the chief priests and elders persuaded the multitude that they should ask Barabbas to destroy Jesus. Um, when, I, when I ended up getting to my jail cell, after booking and everything the, the cell that I got put in I never came out until I got released this morning that would be on the 42nd month since Derek Bro started his YouTube channel I just wonder sometimes how would this have went if I didn't hop on YouTube and see this play being played out in the world all collaborated together it would it still be the same exact way? Would it be... I think it would be... It would have to have been easier to, to fulfill the vision. And that's why... You know, look. I get it. I understand. I, I know the deal. I hear you. Uh, I, I see it. And... And I'm pretty good at making chi cheese in jail. You know, you mix all the cheese and the goodles and noodles, and and uh, it's a it's a real good meal to to make in prison. So, I, I mean, I have a few bucks. I'll I'll be able to survive the commissary. I'll probably get a job for however long I'm there. Uh, when uh, when I'm not up on YouTube for a day, it it'll that'll most likely be the reason why, because I just feel like something's gonna like pop up out of nowhere. Something I've already did time for. Uh, when I walked into my cell, there was there's a thin window, 
on the side of the bunk looking outside. And it was looking outside of a, of a, a giant sign said, Jesus saves. And um, it was right outside the window. And it kind of made me mad. When the governor answered and said to the governor, Whether of the twain were you that I released to you? They said, Barabbas. So Christ became a stumbling stone to them. Yeah. Uh, but it's a good thing that... Excuse me, Justin. I don't know if you ever hear it a little bit. It's a good thing that there were, like in that area, same area, that there were... Listens to the, for the first time may not understand why, when I quote Ezra, why this is so important. All right. Now, you have to remember the ten spies. They come out. They they saw the land. They saw the the, the grapes and stuff, and they were huge. And Caleb and Joshua is the only one that says we're able to stand up against these people, right? And they went. And they came to Moses and Aaron and to all the congregation, of the children of Israel, to the wilderness of Paran, to Kadesh, and brought back word unto them, and to all the congregation, and showed them the fruit of the land. And they told him and said, We came unto the land where, uh, where uh, you sent us, and surely it flows with milk and honey, and this is the fruit of it. How be it the people that dwell in the land are fierce, and the cities are fortified, very great. And wherever we saw the children of Anak, there Amalek dwelleth in the land of the south, and the Hittite, the Jebusite, and the Am Amorite, and in the mountains the Canaanite dwelleth by the sea and along the, uh, by the side of the Jordan. And Caleb still the people toward Moses and said we will uh, we should go up at once and possess it for we are all able to overcome it. Messiah other than the who the Messiah really is you get your eyes to accept someone else to be the Messiah other than the who the Messiah really is what Steve are you what are you saying Oh, wow. He taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel, but he says to eat things sacrificed unto idols and to commit fornication. That all goes together. The fornication is when they interbreed amongst these fallen angels and bring forth these Nephilim, which in turn they try to bring about a mess a, a, mess a messianic figure as a result yeah believe it or not that's the case but let's prove this though let's go to the book of numbers and let's actually read about balaam and let's see what the scripture really says messianic figure as a result yeah believe it or not that's the case but let's prove this though let's go to the book of numbers and let's actually read about balaam and let's see what the scripture really says and not That's, what they I'll, translated in english i want to hear what really is being said now balaam as we read here we go into the uh, book of numbers chapter 22 we start with verse 10 uh, maybe I'll back up just a little bit for, for okay. the sake of understanding what's going on here. And the elders of Moab and the elders of Midian departed with the rewards of divination in their hand. And they came into Balaam and spoke him the words of Balak. Notice the divination right off the bat. And he said unto them, Lodge here this night, and I will bring you back word as the Lord may speak unto me. And the princes of Moab abode with Balaam. All right. Now, keep close eye on the word princes. Okay. Just keep a close eye on them. And God came unto Balaam and said, "What men are these with you?" Balaam said unto God, "Balak, the son of Zippor, king of Moab, who sent." unto me saying behold the people that has come out of Egypt it covers the face of the earth now come curse me them peradventure I shall be able to fight against them and shall drive them out 
God said unto Balaam, You shall not go with them. Peradventure I shall be able to fight against them and shall drive them out. And God said unto Balaam, You shall not go with them. You shall not curse the people, I know the for polls. they are blessed. <laughs> Balaam rose up in the morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuseth to give me leave to go with you. This all plays in, refuseth to give me leave to go with you. This all plays in to the you see what you book them. <laughs> hey, Nick Vandley, you see what you caused? You, you. I got mine off of you. I, I'm, I'm just copying off of how uh, when uh, when Nick talks about the the uh, the, uh, the Elijah type the figure that the the screen seems to change directions. The revelation. And the doctrine of the Nicolaitans, the stumbling stone, etc. We're going to dive into this. First, just kind of cap off what happens uh, in the story that we have in the book of Numbers, chapter 22 here. Balaam, not only has God told him not to curse this people. So, God told Balaam, Balaam, not to curse the people. Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. And Balaam rose up morning and said unto the princes of Balak, Get you into your land, for the Lord refuses to give me to give me leave to go with you. And the princes of my rose up, and they I can't read the whole thing there. And to Balak and said, Balaam refuses to come with us. And Balak yet sent again princes more and more honorable than they. But he also <clears throat> continues on because Balak sends more princes to him, more honorable, offers him anything that he could ever want. And then Balaam, rather than accepting the first ultimatum mm -hmm. by God, continues to entertain these people and even actually go down to speak on God's behalf concerning Israel. Awesome. But what's very vital in all of this is verse 12. You get work done in your house? Because we read in English... Here, nail gun. And God said unto Balaam, <clears throat> Thou shalt not go with them. Thou shalt not curse the people, for they are blessed. Now it doesn't say they are blessed. It says in here, Kibaruchu, because he is blessed, singular. All right? They translate it plural because they assume that that right there, Lotta or Etaam, you should not curse the people, which is plural, Haam, the people. Then they assume that it should then read, for they are blessed, which is incorrect. Kibohu. Because he is blessed. What is the he in this case then? What is the who right here? The word he. Who and he? Is masculine singular. It's I do know this. The beast has a wounded head from the battle that he was defeated, but he still lived, but has a wounded head and did live. It's just a matter of who doesn't have the wounded head and still is being ran by the spirit of the serpent. is talking about the Messiah. 
So if we go back to Revelation and we read, but I have a few things against you because you have there them that hold the doctrine of Balaam, who taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed in the idols and to commit fornication. What is that stumbling block and what is the sacrifices or sacrifice in the idols to commit fornication? That was to bring forth a Messiah figure of their own thinking and their own minds. That's the vision. The com committing fornication is to bring forth those children through fallen angels. Steve, why would you say something like that? Well, think about it scripturally. Isaiah, unto, un, you know, unto you is born a child, a prince. What is it? Isaiah chapter 9, I believe. Right? Um, I can't show that to you on this screen. I'll just pull it up real fast here so we can take a quick look at that. Isaiah 9. This is the famous scripture that we all read. For unto us a child is born, and to us a son is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, the Mighty God, Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. And Balak keeps singing Balaam, all these princes. Okay, so Balak keeps sending Balaam all of these princes. And we read in the book of Numbers. It looks like Balaam is getting tired of Balak sending him all of those princes. That he does this. And we find out, according to Revelation, Bala cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel to eat things sacrificed of things sacrificed unto idols and commit fornication. That doctrine was to bring about a false <laughs> messiah and that is what causes the doctrine of the Nicolaitans to conquer the laity and the brother that sends this to me on uh, Twitter he also noted that the book of Ephesians plays a part in this. Now he looked at this as being the high places, being that that represents the synagogues. But actually the high places in the Greek languages and the Greek language is speaking about a place above even the heavens. It is literally the fallen angels. Which it does. The brother was right. It does play in with all of this that we're talking about in the book of Revelation. It just plays in in a different way. All right? So let's look yeah. at the stumbling block. What do we have in Isaiah chapter... Real quick, we're going to focus on verse 13, chapter 8. The Lord of hosts, him shall you sanctify, and let him be your fear, let him be your dread. And he shall be a set for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem and many among them shall stumble and fall and be broken and be snared and be taken I'm trying to tell you why because they had their own idea. They had their own ideology. They had their own princes like Balaam did. Because Balak threw that out there. He threw that. Balaam had his own princes. Because Balak was throwing them out there. Stumbling stone by sending all these princes, all these notable figures that were coming down there. Makes you wonder if they weren't Nephilim themselves. Well, he was a Moabite. They had fallen angels among them. They had Nephilim. They had giants among them. Maybe that's why Balaam got awestruck and went against God's own word and went down there anyway. Look at 1 Peter, what Peter says. You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, 
to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. What? Hey, by the way, Paul's talking to the Gentiles, okay? They're what? They're a, a holy priest to it. They're to offer what? Spiritual sacrifices. Remember, the book of Revelation says it taught Balak to cast a stumbling block before the children of Israel and eat things sacrificed unto idols and commit fornication. But Peter says you're to offer spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Wherefore also it is contained in the scripture, Behold, I lay in Sion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him shall not be confounded. Therefore which believe he is precious, but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner. Disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same as made the head of the corner. And a stone of stumbling, and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word, being disobedient, whereunto also they are, are, were appointed. But you are chosen generation, a royal priest, and a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who hath called you out of darkness into this marvelous light, which at times past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. Now you know it's talking about the Gentiles. The Gentiles become the priesthood. Why? Because according to the book of Ezra, chapter 9, what do we find that happens over there? We find out that the priesthood did exactly what Balaam said they were going to do. They mingled the seed. They perverted the way of, of, of the children of Israel. See? Ezra 9, verse 1 and 2. Now when these things were done, the princes drew near unto me, saying, The people of Israel and the priests and the Levites have not separated themselves from the peoples of the lands, doing according to their abominations, even of the Canaanites, the Hittites, the Perzites, the Jebusites, the Ammonites, the what? The Moabites. I don't have to read the rest. I'll read verse 2, though. For they have taken of their daughters for themselves and for their sons, that the holy seed have mingled themselves with the peoples of the lands, yea, the hand of the princes and rulers have been first in this faithlessness. And by the way, those peoples were mingled with fallen angels, according to, uh, I think it's uh, Numbers chapter 18. What? Sure they did. Why do you think God had to rise up, raise up another priesthood according to uh, First Peter? Because why in First Peter? Because why they had already mingled their seed, the the the, the priest, the Levites. The iron mixed with clay, the feet, the toes, the ten toes. 